Good morning. Welcome to Lost for Words. It is Valentine's Day and today we are going to explore a love poem from the lovely Miss Elizabeth Bishop and her book of poems. Um, we are going to explore this female American poet um, poem about a hermit and love and it's not your normal love poem. I would not say it is mushy or gushy or flowery. Um, it is actually, I would say, pretty sad love poem, which is kind of nice sometimes because love has many faces and love um, leads you down many different kinds of roads. And sometimes along that path, there is also sadness. So I feel like this is a super, um, it's a great poem to explore love and its depths. This poem is called Chemin de Fer. And it's a beautiful word, um, which is kind of fun when you're thinking of a love poem. You're like, okay, this is going to be like, where are we going? It's something beautiful. Um, but this word um, alludes to like a railway or a railroad track, um, which if she named it railway or railroad track, it would not have quite the same feeling as Chemin de Fer. Um, but it's completely appropriate because that is where this poem begins. Um, this poem is from the perspective of I. Um, so I don't know if that I is Elizabeth Bishop herself, if this is a real experience that she has had, or if this is a story completely fabricated in her imagination. I'm not sure. Um, but it's still told from the perspective of I. Um, so if you're okay with it, we can just go ahead on this Valentine's Day and jump into this quite different and sad love poem about a hermit. Here we go. It says, Alone on the railroad track, I walked with heart pounding. The ties were too close together, or maybe too far apart. The scenery was impoverished, scrub pine and oak. Beyond its mingled gray foliage, I saw the little pond where the dirty hermit lives, like an old tear holding on to its injuries lucidly year after year. The hermit shot off his shotgun, and the tree by his cabin shook. Over the pond went a ripple. The pet hen went chook chook. Love should be put into action, screamed the old hermit. Across the pond, an echo tried and tried to confirm it. <sighs> okay. Um... I love this poem because I feel like the way she has written it, you're walking with her down this railroad track. Um, her use of imagery like easily transports you to these railroad tracks. And it almost feels like you are Elizabeth Bishop or you are the I walking down these railroad tracks that are sort of confusing. It says, alone on the railroad track, I walked with a pounding heart. So you can feel this sense of like no one around. It's just you, this quiet, except for the sound of your pounding heart. And you're um, making your way down this railroad track. Um, that sort of leaves you discombobulated, I feel like, because it says the ties were too close together or maybe too far apart. So there's something wrong with these railroad tracks, something that's not quite right about them. Um, the railroad ties, you know, are the, the 
So if the railroad track's going like this, it's all the little wood pieces that go on, that are underneath the tracks that go this way. Um, and so she's like, either they're too close together or they're too far apart, but there's just something not quite right. So you can almost imagine her like walking, skipping, running down this railroad track. And like, there's something about her trying to keep step with this railroad track that feels like confusing. And so you can feel that feeling in your body. Um, and then it says the scenery was impoverished. So suddenly it's like you sort of look up from the railroad tracks and you look around and there's a sense of like poverty around you. Scrub pine and oak beyond its mingled gray foliage. I saw the little pond. I think that's kind of interesting because sometimes when you look around in nature, like you can look into like at trees and it can feel rich and um, inspiring. But there are times when you look around at the trees and the shrubbery and the things that are around you in nature, and there's something about like either the season or the way they've been growing together, or there's like a wildness that there can feel like this sense of like sadness in their landscape or this poverty in their landscape um which i think is really fascinating that nature can also have the same feeling that like a house can like there are some houses that are like mansions and beautiful and rich and then there's other houses you pass by and they're dilapidated and sad looking and have a feeling of poverty but this nature scene that elizabeth bishop is walking through has that same like feeling of poverty um and as she's walking along this poor um impoverished nature scene she comes upon a little pond where a dirty hermit lives um so now this chemin de fer has brought us somewhere We've come through these impoverished trees and we've arrived at a little pond where a hermit lives, a dirty hermit lives. And this little pond, sort of like the landscape around it, it says it lies there like an old tear, holding on to its injuries lucidly year after year. I love that. I love this little um, stanza. I love imagining a pond, like this thing where you normally, like normally when you see a pond, like, or when I do, like I imagine like ducks out there and fish in the pond and like dragonflies and milkweed and like frogs. And like a pond has its own like life. This, uh, feeling of life that goes on in it and around it but this pond when she arrives at this pond where the dirty hermit lives she looks at this pond and she sees it lying there like an old tear um so you immediately imagine someone's sadness and for me like as I'm reading this I almost imagine the hermit like a tear from this hermit um or maybe that there's some correlation between the pond and the hermit um but here there's a dirty hermit and there's a pond a pond that lays on the landscape like an old tear holding on to its injuries lucidly year after year um See that there's something very strange about the idea of an old tear. Like usually tears don't last on your face very long. Um, when you cry, it's a fresh thing. It's from feelings that are coming up right then. So imagining a pond as a tear that's 
old, like a tear that was cried and that never disappeared, that it has stayed there year after year and it's holding on to some injury or some pain year after year, which I find fascinating because I'm like, tears really can't do that. Like tears are cried and then they, um, usually they're wiped away or they evaporate, they disappear pretty fast. Um, but here we have a tear that is the pond, a part of this landscape, and it's holding on to injuries. Like somehow this pond or maybe this hermit have been hurt badly in some way and they just are holding on to some kind of injury, some kind of pain year after year, lucidly year after year. So whatever the pain is, is like, like clear and vivid and fresh in their mind. Like though the tear is old, the injury has a clarity to it year after year. Um, like to me, like her description of this scene is just like, whew, like you're just there with her and it has so much feeling. Like you can feel all of it. You can feel the railroad tracks. You can feel the poor landscape. You can feel the sad pond and the dirty hermit and the pain they're holding on to. Um, and then it says, I love this part, the hermit shot off his shotgun and the tree by his cabin shook. So then it's like, bam, <laughs> and the tree shakes. Um, and over the pond went a ripple. So this tear that's, you know, this pond, it's a part of this landscape, this old tear holding on to pain. This hermit shoots his gun and the tear, there's like movement in the tear, like, to me, it almost feels like this like fresh, like feeling of the injuries or the pain. Um, and it says the pet hen went chook chook. We scared the pet hen. Um, this to me, I love this next part because I feel like usually when I think of a hermit, like here is Elizabeth Bishop walking down these railroad tracks and usually if someone crosses over onto like a reclusive person's property or a hermit's property, this person has usually done everything they can to keep people away, um, to just be alone and have solitude and not be bothered by people. Um, there's no desire to engage with people. And so I feel like in my mind, when someone crosses over onto the property of a hermit, the thing that would happen is they would shoot off their gun and then they would say, get off my property. That's what they would yell, get out of here. But um, this poem goes in a different direction. This hermit yells something that's like out of the ordinary of what your imagination would imagine a hermit, a hermit to yell. This hermit yells, love should be put into action. <laughs> Screamed the old hermit and across the pond, an echo tried and tried to confirm it. Um, and to me, this part is kind of like extra, like desperate and extra sad because like here you have this hermit in this sad landscape with this tear like pond and someone has made him nervous. So he shoots off his shotgun. Um, and the thing that he screams out into this impoverished landscape, the thing that he screams out into the world, the thing he screams out for this trespasser's ears, maybe Elizabeth Bishop is love should be put into action. And I just imagine Elizabeth Bishop like stopping and being confused because what do you do when a hermit yells that? Um, how 
do you put love into action for this hermit? Um, do you leave? Like, should Elizabeth Bishop turn around and leave this hermit alone? Um, what would love, what, how is love put into action? Um, should she cross over onto his property and try to show him what love is? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but it also has the feeling of this hermit talking to himself. And to me, that's fascinating because there's this sense that this hermit is out on this land with his little cabin and this impoverished landscape with his little sad pond with injuries that are painful that he holds on to year after year. And it's like this hermit almost knows that like the thing that would heal these injuries is love. That the thing that would change this impoverished landscape is love. And he screams it out into the universe. He screams it out into the landscape. Like it's almost like a prayer or a something like someone begging the universe like, um, love should be put into action, like, and yelling that out into the universe and standing there and waiting for something to happen and hearing like this echo try again and again to confirm this um, idea of love back to the hermit. And it almost feels like sort of hopeless and like, can an echo ever um, love you back? I don't know. Um, it's an echo is just your own voice um, reverberating like throughout the woods. Um, can you yell things out into the universe and have them spoken back to you? Can it preach to you? Can your own words change yourself? Um, but I kind of like to imagine, um, that once this has been like yelled out into the universe, it's like prayed out into the universe, preached out to the universe, like whatever this, um, statement is to this hermit, I imagine that Elizabeth Bishop and the Hermit both are left with the question of how. <laughs> and if it's preached back to them or to them, I imagine Elizabeth Bishop being like, yeah, but how? Like, how, how do I put love into action for you? How do I put love into action for myself? Imagine this Hermit being like, yeah, like, but it, like, or this feeling of, like, also saying that maybe that's why the hermit is there, because love wasn't put into action. Um, I don't know, but I think what I want to do is I'd like to write a poem from, I sort of have this idea in my head of Elizabeth Bishop. I'm not sure if I'm going to write it from the perspective of Elizabeth Bishop or the Hermit, but I want to write something about um, love being put into action because I feel like this poem leaves you with a sense that nothing is going to happen. <laughs> and so I want to make something happen. So, um, if you will bear with me, I will be back and I'm going to go do a little bit of writing and a little bit of playing and see what we can come up with.
Okay, so I did a little playing with Elizabeth Bishop and this dirty old hermit. And I've come up with what um, my brain dreamed up for a scenario that would happen after this hermit screams, put love into the action out into the universe. Um, if you want to, you can do this for yourself. Um, you might have a very like fun and creative response to what you would like to happen next. Um, so this is, this is what I've written so far. I wrote, the dirty hermit found a pen, a stranger, a stranger, a stranger left an odd golden pen and a note that said, I love you is everywhere. Won't you put it there? Won't you put it there? So he looked at a blade of grass. He laughed and then he wrote, I love you. He looked at his dirty shoes and he laughed and then he wrote, I love you. Then he looked at the sad gray sky. Then he laughed and wrote, I love you until it turned his world bright and sunny seas of blue until he made everything new with I love you. So that's where we're going to stop. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, but I will see you again next time.